Dave Ramsey actually calls it sanctioned incompetence. I love that phrase because if you're not doing something about poor behavior or poor performance, you're actually saying it's okay. And then what does that do to the people that really are striving, that really do want to succeed, that really do want to pull for the greater good of the company. You're slowly crushing their spirit. Good morning and welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. Today I am joined by the delightful Christy Moser, who is not only the owner of Lead Together LLC, but also the co-founder of True Factional Integrators. So welcome to the show, Christine. Lovely to have you here. Thank you so much, Deborah, for having me here. Yeah. Now, Christy is actually based just outside of Detroit in Michigan, which means I think it's actually afternoon for you rather than morning, but um, it's Saturday morning here for me. <laughs> um, now, we actually, we met through uh, online, like LinkedIn, didn't we? So we were actually, um, yes. we haven't actually met in person yet. I hope that we will very, very soon, but we've yes. just got been chatting and always been there for each other online. Yeah. Great. So you, yeah, you, been fantastic. you run a couple of, you. oh, thank you. <laughs> You've got a couple of businesses that are all based around fractional integrators. And I suppose my first question is, you know, what the heck is a fractional integrator, which I'll get you to answer later. But first of all, tell me a bit about yourself. Tell me about Christine. Tell me your story, where you came from, um, what your personal professional best in life are so far. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so fractional, being a fractional integrator is First of all, the most fun I've ever had in my life, the most rewarding thing I've done. And I got to tell you, it was a crazy journey getting to this point. I grew up in a family business, so production painting for the automotive industry, and just realized now that I actually acted as an integrator even that far back, but always knew from the get-go that I wanted to have my own companies. I always had that entrepreneurial bug and became very passionate about just providing really good service for my clients or customers, whatever business it was that I had. So being a small business owner, I opened different businesses, sold businesses, purchased businesses. And fast forward to 2016, I happened to meet someone for coffee in my networking group. Um, the gentleman was Rick Wilson, who's now my mentor and co-founder of True Fractional Integrators. And he began to tell me about this thing called EOS. EOS. <laughs> I yes, said, that's I've never I'm heard of this. <laughs> so can you explain this to me? And really, Deborah, by the end of that conversation, a couple of things I had realizations about. First of all, I wanted to hire him as my fractional integrator in the business I had at that time because I was the acting visionary. I had big things I wanted to accomplish. And it just made so much sense when he talked about what EOS does for a business. Mm -hmm. And I recognized in myself those visionary tendencies that, you know, I, I'll, I'll share a little bit later about what some of those realizations were, but I needed that. I needed that steadfast fractional integrator to really help me see things clearly, help me put the right people in the right seats and just get the traction that I so desperately wanted to amplify. The second thing that came out of that coffee meeting was, oh my gosh, I want to do what he does. Because I realized just a few years prior to that, that in my own businesses, whenever things ran smoothly, I got bored. And what does a bored visionary do? They start rooting mess. around and trying to find more stuff to do to make things exciting. So I recognized that and I thought, you know what, that's fine. I'm glad I know this about myself now. What can I do that really feeds that part of me? I always liked the chaos, the, the challenging parts going into a new business or doing a startup. When things became, um, you know, when things quieted down or fell into a normal or a usual rhythm, I got a little bored. So that's what appealed to me when Rick told me about what a fractional integrator does. So being new to EOS at that point, having run it in my company for, for you know, half a year, almost a year, I decided to make the leap and become a full-time fractional integrator. I had an amazing mentor, Rick Wilson, which is part of why I feel so strongly now about mentoring others to become fractional integrators, because it absolutely changed my life. So working with him, shadowing him, working with some amazing implementers to really understand and learn the language of EOS, see the impact that it had on visionaries, their leadership teams, the employees, their families, like that was what drew me in. 
that was and that was it i was i was sold and that was back in 2018 started working with clients independently and then we co-founded true fractional integrators let's see probably two years ago um just before before covid hit <laughs> and we've been building the community and gathering like-minded people and and that's that's where we where we're at now excellent and so in terms of, you know, what's been the most exciting thing that has happened in your life um, in terms of finding this this thing called EOS or EOS? I mean, EOS, it's funny, isn't it? Because if you actually Google EOS over here in New Zealand, you get Canon cameras, which of course is EOS. You get lipsticks, you get yeah. shoes. Nobody actually really knows what EOS is. So, yeah, um, tell me a little bit about your the, the exciting part. Why did you like EOS and what was it that really appealed to you? It just makes so much sense. And I think... So many times we try to complicate things yeah. or we attend a conference or a workshop and we come out of that so excited and on fire and ready to go. The problem is we get back to our organizations and we don't have a plan to actually carry that out. Right. So that there, there's frustration for the visionary when they're when they're that excited. And now they have these ideas, they can see what's possible, but there's no one there to really help them go to to carry that out, to put that plan in place. That to me is what was the most rewarding thing is just being able to see plans come to fruition, to see leadership teams get healthy. I mean, I have the, the privilege of working in the same rooms as implementers. I sit elbow to elbow with my teams at the quarterlies and annual planning sessions. And I just get to absorb everything that we're being taught along with my team. So it's really neat to then go with them and for the next 13, 12 or 13 weeks, actually carry those plans out and then come back knowing that we, you know, we're hitting 100% rock completion. Yeah. We've taken our to-do completion from 70% to 85% and continuing to work. So it's, I really meet each client where they're at and it's seeing that growth happen. That's the most thrilling part. Excellent, yeah. I know how it feels being the implementer on the other side of that and sort of, you know, working with those teams and seeing that stuff happen as well. So for people who may not know much about EOS, can you just describe for us in your own words, what is a visionary and what is an integrator? Because these might be new terms to a traditional kind of business. So a visionary tends to be someone that is the CEO, the founder. They're the person with the ideas. They had this original spark and they want to see it come to life in the world. They have a deep belief in what they have to offer, whether it's a product or service or a community, whatever it is that they want to do. Um, it is very difficult for some visionaries to also then take all of those ideas and come up with a plan that makes things happen. So that's where the integrator enters. And this, that's, it's really a, um, a puzzle piece, right? You have to be the right fit. It has to be the right personality, the right combination of business experience, life experience, um, and not even so much industry experience. And I can talk a little bit more about that later, mm -hmm. but it has to be that right fit because that integrator balances out that visionary. So it means we have open discussions. It means we're saying like, all right, what's really the focus for this quarter? We've agreed with the leadership team. This is what we're going to do. Are we saying we're changing this? Why don't we wait until next quarter? And then we'll just revisit that, right? We're not going to lose it. Mm -hmm. And that's really what a visionary wants is, is they want to be heard. They want to make sure that their ideas are being captured, that they have a sounding board and that they have a strong right-hand person to actually carry those things out yeah. and as a fractional integrator we happen just to do that proportionate to the amount of time that we're with somebody sure we'll come back to that fractional piece in a moment i think it's um i always describe when i'm talking to a team who maybe hasn't heard these terms before i say the visionary they are the people who really take the business forward they have the crazy ideas they have that you know without them the businesses would not move forward not grow but sometimes those crazy ideas can really distract from everything that is important in the business and so i always describe that the integrator is almost like a gatekeeper um in terms of just making sure that the visionary is is really focused on having those fantastic 
fantastic ideas and, and the big relationships and solving the big problems, but not getting involved in the day-to-day running of the business. And when I say that to a lot of founders or, or, or owners, they go, well, I can actually do that. And it's like, yes, you can. You can actually go and just do the stuff that you love and enjoy and are really good at. And the integrator makes sure that those crazy ideas get pushed, put through a filter and then get put into action when the time is right. Um, and for most people, that's a little bit of like, wow, I never realized that that could be done. So that integrator role is really, really key to to enable that visionary to kind of let go of the business and really focus on where they can have the most value. Is that how you see it? Absolutely. It's very freeing for them to be able to see that things are still progressing, even though they're not in the business day to day. And a lot of times the leadership team actually functions better because they now have the autonomy the right people in the right seats on that leadership team get amazing things done. And the visionary, visionary may never have really seen that before because they're always in it and they're tweaking things and they're coming up with new ideas. Yes. Now we have a game plan. Now we're actually going to stick to it for the next 90 days and we're meeting on a weekly basis and we're making sure that we're really just driving all that forward. Yeah. So in, those, in the weekly L10s, the visionary gets to see this progress. Yeah. We get to work through issues together. We get departments working together. And that's when they get to see that stuff's actually happening. And nothing makes me happier than to see my visionaries go on vacation for one, two, three, or four weeks, knowing that they can do that and that they have the right people in place. And it also gives them that time to pursue other passions outside of holidays as well. So a lot of my um, visionaries, yeah. they've got something they really wanted to do but never find the time for it and suddenly they have the time to do that, which is really cool. One of the things that, you know, when I describe the accountability chart, oh dear, that's my dog's just gone um, barking after something, sorry. Um, one of the things that when I first describe the accountability chart to people and I say, hey, look, we've got this visionary role, we've got this integrated role, we've got the leadership team and this is how it, this is the functions of the business, how it all works together, they automatically assume that that integrated role is a full-time role because they seem to think of it as being like a a GM or a COO which often can be a full-time role but in our model it's not a full it doesn't have to be a full-time role in fact really I know I've I've got a couple of clients who literally have a um, you know 140 staff and their integrator works one day a week in the business and can do that so how come because that seems really odd to most people you're kind of a general manager only working one day in the business tell me a little bit about you know how that works and then what this fractional thing actually means yes So great question. We get that's probably one of the first questions we get asked. And what's interesting is, is we do work with our clients one full day per week that allows us to focus only on that team. We have blinders on to everything else. We're there to be the integrator for that team. Mm -hmm. And because of how efficient we are and because we've done this over and over in so many different situations, we're we're good at what we do. Mm So we're also not responsible for all of these other things within a business. And a lot of times a full-time integrator will also be sitting in another seat, for instance, director of operations or um, sometimes VP of sales. They may be in another role Mm -hmm. or be getting pulled into another role. We are not. We solely focus on that integrator role. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, it really lets us get a lot of traction for that client because we're focused on that while other people leading their departments are you know sometimes things happen fires come up that they have to put out we we can help resolve some of those things but it's through the leadership team Actually, I, I hadn't really in, considered that before because I have got one client who's got a, an integrator who works as the, both the integrator and, as you said, the chief operating officer. Um, and, yeah, you're right that there is that tendency that they get dragged back into the day-to-day stuff because of their operations yes. role. So actually having a, a completely separate integrator is, is of huge benefit, isn't it? It is. But I, I, I'll tell you that when at least I can speak for myself personally on this and probably for most people in my community – that when we start working with a client, we can we can assess, will they need a full-time integrator? Mm-hmm. And if we believe that they do, like we see that there are there's enough going on, the growth trajectory is strong, they have a, a growing company, a growing team, additional opportunities knocking down the door. That's, I mean, I, I, tr- I work myself out of a job. <laughs> you know, so I'm typically with clients between nine months to two years, yep. but, I help them identify when that time is that, okay, what's the right time to bring in a full-time integrator? What does that 
specific integrator need to look like yeah. personality wise experience wise um what kind of background do they need to have what roles will they be filling within the company and then i help them throughout that search really identifying who would be the best match for the visionary who i've at that point been working with for you know a year or two really getting to know so that i can help them make an informed decision when they bring that integrator on board mm -hmm. We also help with onboarding that person so that by the time we're done with that, you know, as one of my clients says, I'm like Mary Poppins where I pop open the umbrella and like float away to the next family. And with us, it's with the clients, you know, we help, we see them through that whole process. And by the time we, you know, graduate them, they have a fully formed leadership team made up of the right people in the right seats. Mm -hmm. They have a strong plan in place and that integrator is set up for success. Yeah. Actually, I think you make a really valid point there. I mean, it depends on the kind of um, growth that the business is going through as to whether that role is a, a one-day, two-day or full-time role. And I suppose, you know, if you think about because the, the integrator usually has ultimate responsibility for the, the, the budget, the profit and loss, the business plan, mm -hmm. um, and then the special projects because their role is around making sure those special projects that come from the fabulous ideas actually, um, you know, can be commercialized, actually do um, follow the core focus of the business, et cetera, et cetera. So I suppose if you're going through and they're looking after ultimately the entire um, leadership team. So if you are going through a, a period of huge growth, you're going to need more capacity in that time. Is that right? Yes. And we do actually oversee the P&L. We do oversee the budget through the leadership team, mm -hmm. right? So we're making sure that the company is heading in the right direction financially. We're, ma we're identifying issues. We're, we identify savings whenever we can. We work closely with every department to ensure that things are set up the right way. So it, it's... There are different versions of fractional integrators out there, but we have full integrator duties. So if you looked at Mark Winter's integrator job description, yep. every item on there we're doing, we just do it proportionate to the amount of time that we're with that client. Yep. So we, the leadership team does report to us. We work with them to develop. We work with them to help resolve obstacles. We're keeping everybody focused, right? We're keeping that right pace and that right attitude so that we can get done what it is the visionary has, you know, cast out for us. Mm. I'm really intrigued because I've, I've never really thought about this because it's not been a popular, it's much more popular in the US to have this kind of service, not so much over here yet. I mean, we're working on it and I think we need it, desperately need it over here given the similar size of our businesses. But how do, does it work when you first go into a business? Because you're the outsider, right? You're not part of the, the team that may have been there. We know with family business, they could have been there for 25, 30 years all working together and all of a sudden this stranger comes in who's not there full time, who's not sort of, you know, part of the permanent team how does that work it's one of our superpowers i believe right. you know like i said we've done it we've done it over and over and i i was talking with a one of my visionaries the other day and just talking about what it's like to meet a team for the first time and they're strangers at that point oh. right i've had good conversations with a visionary but w so quickly building that rapport, helping them get some wins, building that trust, being um, a support system for them. The, the process actually goes quicker than you would expect, but it's because we're there specifically to do that. We're not, we're not getting distracted by anything. We also don't have pre-existing relationships with Bob in operations or Becky in accounting. I didn't go to school with Maria, you know, there's, there's none of that other, um, none of those other relationships that could interfere with maybe judgment Objectivity. or sometimes, there, mm -hmm. yeah, there's, there's sometimes difficult decisions that have to be made and we give everybody a fair shot and we really work just using the EOS tools, those five foundational tools to really make sure that we're on solid footing. Mm -hmm. So when we start talking about, you know, do we have the right accountability chart set up? Do we have the right people in these seats? You start seeing, you know, body language maybe, or, you know, you start picking up on those things and we know, okay, these are the conversations we need to have. But our goal is really to lead that company and that leadership team to be healthy, to love what they're doing, to have it be enjoyable, to have the company be profitable. People just want to know what they need to do and, and, and to be able to do what they're great at. Yeah. 
And we help them get to that point. And you make a actually a really valid point there. You, you do have to have some tough conversations, don't you? Because the integrator really oh, yes. is, whereas the visionary generally, and I, this is, you know, but generally tends to be a people pleaser, people lover, doesn't like having the difficult conversations, just wants to see the good in everything. That, you know, sometimes we have to have difficult conversations and it really is the role of the integrator at that leadership team level to have those, those tough conversations, isn't it? It is. It is. And it, no one likes having difficult conversations. Mm -hmm. We never go into it saying, you know, oh, I'm going gonna, gonna to fire someone today. We never, <laughs> ever think that. And yeah. I have to say that by the time someone leaves the team, it's not a surprise. You know, we really are very clear about setting expectations, providing training. We really are methodical in how we approach that. But ultimately, we, I mean, I've learned this in my own businesses. I had a hard time. I'm very empathetic. I have a big heart, mm. but I learned the very hard way that if you, if you keep people around because there are extenuating circumstances mm -hmm. and you get too personally involved, it will drag the entire company down yeah. and it will impact every worker around them. Um, Dave Ramsey actually calls it sanctioned incompetence. <laughs> And I love that phrase because if you're not doing something about poor behavior or poor performance, you're actually saying it's okay. And then what does that do to the people that really are striving, that really do want to succeed, that really do want to pull for the greater good of the company? You're slowly crushing their spirit. So that really helps to have those, when you, when you have that mindset, it really helps to have those difficult conversations. And I usually find that people there's almost a sense of relief. People don't want to fail in their roles. Yeah. You know, they're not trying to do a bad job. It's just sometimes it's not the right fit and we help them figure out, you know, what's the next step. Interesting. Another question that I've got on my mind, and this is just something I'm thinking of, is, you know, in terms of working with these businesses, are you actually physically going into the businesses for a day a week? Is it done virtually? Is it a mixture depending on the business? How does it work? A mixture depending on the business. Yep. So I, I love being with people. Yeah. If I could, I'd be with every client every week in person. And when my clients are when my clients are in the area, I am with them every week in person. Yep. Um, I love to drive. I love cars, by the way. Oh, yes. Yeah, so I'm I, this conversation. So I, whatever, whatever, <laughs> whatever we talked about that, um, whenever I can get time behind the wheel, I'm a happy woman. So I prefer to travel in person. However, I do have clients across the country mm. and they can be virtually running really anywhere in the world, barring major time zone issues, <laughs> Yes, you know, but <laughs> even if they are virtual, like I have a, a, an amazing client down in Florida and at least on a quarterly basis, we are in person yep. doing, you know, going out to dinner together, having our quarterly with our implementer, mm -hmm. just bonding so that the next 12 weeks when we're meeting via Zoom, the familiarity is there, that, that comfort level is there. Yeah, and that's that so team that's health part as well, isn't it? I mean, having the time to spend with the team on a quarterly basis. So I've got a lot of clients who are actually um, in, in Australia, and I spend my time between, you know, Zealand and Australia, but I only see them once a quarter when I'm actually doing those sessions. The rest of the time that we're catching up via Zoom, and we can do sessions via Zoom, but the very, very minimum, at least once a year, you need to get together Um Yes. quarterly is ideal once a year is the absolute bare minimum otherwise you just don't have that same level of uh, relationship so yeah the relationship between an integrator and an implementer because this is one of these things that anybody who's new to eos often they get the two confused and um, yeah. they don't really understand what each of them do so from an implementer's point of view my role is around teaching the eos tools it's about being a coach it's about being a facilitator of conversations and having a very very external view which means i, I am i'm there not as a consultant not to help them um, not to, to give them the the answers but to help them make the right decisions by by facilitating those discussions um, and then the integrator, as we've talked about, is the one that holds the, the business plan, the, the overall accountability, it leads the team, etc. So how do those two roles yeah. work together? In, I mean, I've seen it, but I'd love to hear you know, how you see it working. They work together beautifully. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, I told you, like, I really admire the implementers that I work with. Uh, it's a pleasure to be in the same room with my teams working through that agenda, being able to step out of the business and really work on the higher higher level vision. Mm -hmm. And as their integrator, I need the same 
I need that same leeway that they have to really have time to be creative and think what issues do we need to solve? What really are the 90 day priorities? Mm -hmm. So the implementer helps to, helps us to get out of those weeds so that we can see clearly. And then the integrator is in the business for those next 12 to 13 weeks, actually carrying those things out. So we're really, we're really bringing that traction to companies that might otherwise just be spinning their wheels. They, you know, they have rocks, but two weeks into the quarter, they're like squirrel, fire, <laughs> something happened. Life happens. There's always things that will distract us. Yes. That's where we come in. We're there to say like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yep. That's not fun, but you know, let's not forget about what we committed to. Let's take a look at this. What do we have to change something? What, what contingency plans can we put in place? How do we not do that again? Mm -hmm. And that's really what our role is, is in the business. Yeah. Um, the majority of clients that we work with are actually implementer referrals because they've recommend, they've recognized that there's a visionary that is also in the integrator seat. You know, sometimes when a visionary can't identify the right person to be that integrator, they take on that responsibility themselves. And mm -hmm. sometimes it becomes a tremendous burden for them, but they feel trapped because there's no one else they can really rely on, or maybe there's not the right fit person for that. We can step into that and be that plug and play integrator and we onboard ourselves, we get up and running really quick. So that there's value in that, I think, too, for when people are starting out on EOS and may not have an integrator, we really shorten that that curve. Instead of trying to find that right integrator over the next six to 12 months, we can jump in and start helping them get traction right away. And like you said, you then actually help with the, with finding the right person to take over, uh, the yes. handover. And of course, the, by that time, EOS is running really smoothly in the business. And so the integrator has a slightly easier right. role, I guess. <laughs> yes, yeah. they do. Excellent. So um, yeah. you talked at the beginning about the fact that, you know, that, that um, you don't have to have industry experience, right? So some people will actually look, listen to that and go, that's, that's impossible. Our, our business our industry is Crazy. so unique. <laughs> It, it, it's we hear that that's probably the second one like well do you have experience in this and this and this mm -hmm. it's like well no like probably 0.04% of people have experience in that what our skill set allows us to come into a business and because we have such broad experience across many different industries both with our own companies or in some cases companies that people have worked for we have such a, a broad experience that we're able to pull on to, to draw on all of those things mm -hmm. that when we see something in a business we recognize that we say you know what this i can see what's going on here while other people might be focused on a bigger issue here it looks bigger we can see that the real root issue is over here yeah. and that just comes with experience and having having done it um industry experience i would say that all of us love learning. All of us are quick studies. Mm -hmm. We are curious by nature. Yep. Um, I, I just, I, I have a client that is in the um, automotive electrical um, component testing business. And okay. it's fascinating to me because it's, it's automotive, it's cutting edge, it's electrical ve electric vehicles. And just in a matter of a few weeks, the, the, the onboarding that happens, it goes very, very quickly because we're in it. Yep. We're in it. We're, we're digging for, for where the issues are. We're listening. We're asking the right questions. So within a matter of a month or two, I mean, the comfort level is, it, it's extraordinary how quickly that increases. Yeah. I must admit, I'm not, I've been a, before I became an EOS implementer, I've been a coach for about 11 years. And um, every time I go to work with somebody, they'd say, oh, you know, have you got experience in this industry? I go, no, but I do understand business and I am curious. So I will be asking, I'm that terrible child that used to go, but why and why? But I don't understand. Tell me more. <laughs> um, and whilst that can be a little bit frustrating, I mean, it means that we can't just speed really, really quickly. And 
as you said, I mean, we're, we're implementing, especially with the US, we're implementing a proven system, which means that yes. it is the it is the same system that we're using, same model, same tools in each business. Right. Obviously, there are nuances around the actual industry, but it's actually about mm-hmm. putting that structure in place and having those conversations, you know, looking at those issues, resolving the issues, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. Yeah. And because we are experienced practitioners of that EOS tool set, yep. we can always bring them back to that. Mm-hmm. So our, again, my goal is to work myself out of a job, yeah. which means that I have to empower my team to be able to, to solve things on their own and challenge each other on what the next right step is. Mm-hmm. And the EOS tools do just that. Yeah. So by always bringing it back to a tool, we're actually, we don't really need to know what the specific technical thing mm-hmm. is. It's the tools address all of that. Yeah, it's a beautiful framework. I mean, I fell in love with it when I saw it two and a half years ago and just thought this is everything. Everything that I've actually kind of done naturally in my own businesses and other people's businesses, combined with the stuff that you learn in your academic kind of career and all the beautiful books that you read, but all just put into this really beautiful, simple, pragmatic framework, which I love. Absolutely. Cool. Hey, look, um, we're, we've been talking for a little while now and it always goes so, so quickly. Um, so we're going to have to wrap it up, but I wanted to ask you for a few tips and tools you can share with the listeners. So what would you say your three kind of top tips or tools that um, somebody can go and, and have a look at, use, whatever it might be? So I would say one of the biggest things in, in this whole journey was really knowing yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, when I recognized in myself that I embrace the chaos and that it it really helped me then recognize this opportunity. So really take the time to get to know yourself. I'm a big fan and recommend this to all my teams. Journaling, really just take the time to sit down, take a clarity break and just get to know, get to know who you are. Um, Don't be afraid. I guess my next point would be don't free, don't be afraid to ask for help from those that have gone before you right there are there's there are so many people that are willing to help whether it's with leadership whether you're a manager that's looking to amplify your skills there are always people around you that would be more than happy to help you all you have to do is ask and i think so many times people shy away from doing that um and then the third thing do not let fear hold you back I, I, there's, there are times that get so scary and I, this, everybody saw this during the pandemic, like there was, it was a huge shift for everyone. And if we had let fear hold us back, there's so many amazing things that wouldn't have happened despite everything else that was going on. So I always, I always encourage people to think of fear as like, that's, it's the same feeling as being excited. Mm-hmm. Right in your stomach when you feel that sense of fear, just think I'm so excited, you know, and it changes. Yeah. So and that kind of thinking just opens up amazing things in life, regardless of what somebody's doing. And I think that it's always easier, like so if you're if you've asked for help and you've got your stuff surrounded by great people, you've got a good implement, you've got a good integrator, you've got good got good mentors, good mastermind groups, all those things, then actually that fear almost disappears um it, it is it just becomes an excitement about yeah we're changing again like, what, what, wonder what will happen this time around yeah. <laughs> yeah. great yeah. this will be even better yeah exactly yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, brilliant oh that, that's really really helpful hey christine if anybody wants to get in contact with you how would they do best do that the best way is linkedin yep. so i'm active on linkedin it's linkedin um christine moser just my name yep and that's where you'll be able to find me my website is also um, lead together llc.com okay beautiful and that's i'm happy to have a conversation i am as i mentioned earlier i'm incredibly passionate about helping people with an entrepreneurial spirit an entrepreneurial spirit and that integrator dna yep. passionate about helping those folks create their own fractional integrator practice there's not enough of us in the world. There are so many more visionaries that need help. 
So that's been that's been an absolute um, passion of mine, helping other people yeah. make that transition. And I can vouch for that because I put one of my, my clients who's a virtual assistant agency in contact with you. You gave her the time to actually explain all this and, and they're now looking at introducing that. And in fact, you know, I said earlier that it's not very popular here in New Zealand or Australia. We are getting there. So there are now a couple of agencies out there who will offer fractional integrators. So if you're sitting here listening to this and thinking, you know, well, how do I get one of those? By all means, um, talk to Christine or drop me a line. I'm happy to put you in contact with those businesses that do that. Hey, um, it's been an absolute pleasure as always, Christine. I always love talking to you. I love our chats. Um, thank you for sharing that wisdom. I you think as we've, well, don't. Yeah, the, the what the heck is a fractional integrator? I, I get it now. I get it more than I've ever got it, which is great. And I hopefully our listeners have now got a really good sense as well. So thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. Um, look forward to talking again thank soon. Thank you so much for having me. My All right. Pleasure. Have a great night or a great day. <laughs> thank you. You Bye. too. Thanks.